Hey everyone, this is Andrea from Doctors of Running, and today I'm going to talk about my top five shoes so far in 2023. I was bummed I didn't get to join the guys and Connor from Running Warehouse in the episode a couple weeks ago, but I thought I would come on here today to tell you what shoes I've been loving so far this year. Um, as always, we love to hear what shoes you've been enjoying, so shoot us an email or leave us a comment below. We love to hear from you. So I was thinking about my top five, and I had four really solid choices, and then I went back and looked and thought, okay, well, what other shoes did I just really enjoy testing? And it turns out that my number five shoe is actually a trail shoe, the Saucony Exodus Ultra 2. I don't do a ton of trail running, but we've got a lot of trails here in Connecticut, a lot of really technical trails, and when I do go trail running, I need a shoe I can count on. And I've had the opportunity to test a ton of trail shoes this year, and I've got to say, this one is my favorite so far. The fit is secure. Um, I really liked the fit of this version better than version one. I found that version two just had a little bit more room in the toe box. The midfoot fit a little more snug. Version one, the midfoot felt a little bit sloppy. I didn't feel like my foot was locked down as well. And I just, every run I took this shoe on, I just felt totally confident and secure with my footing. Um, this shoe has a Power Run PB midsole, which is Saucony's Super Foam. And then that's inside a Power Run frame. So it's a nice balance between like responsive cushioning, but that Power Run frame just felt like it provides a little bit of stability to that Super Foam so that it wasn't an uh, overly cushioned soft shoe, which I don't really do well with on trails. Um, this shoe has four and a half millimeter lugs, which I found to give me really nice traction on just about any surface. The only place I found that it didn't work well was really deep mud. You need a shoe with deeper lugs than that, like the Peregrine ST, which I think has six or six and a half millimeter lugs. But otherwise, this shoe I can take anywhere, be totally confident in it, so that's why it's my number five shoe of the year. I would definitely encourage you to check it out if you're looking for a trail running shoe. Um, it's marketed as their ultra shoe. I could definitely see using it for a long distance trail race. It's a little heavy at uh, 9.6 ounces for a men's nine, 8.5 ounces for a women's eight to be used for shorter races, but if you just need a shoe to take out on the trails for some runs, this is a great choice. All right, moving on to my number four shoe. I am really excited about this shoe. I think it's going to move up in my rankings as the year goes on, but I've only gotten to test it on a few runs. But it is the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. This shoe is awesome. And it reminds me a lot of the original Alpha Fly, which I love for races basically half marathon on down. The only thing I don't love about the original Alpha Fly is it's a little short in the toe box, and I have definitely lost my big toenails from running a half marathon in that shoe. So this shoe reminds me so much of the bounce that I get at initial contact from the original Alpha Fly. I tend to land like at my lateral midfoot. So if you think about those AirPods on the Alpha Fly, you're really landing right on that the most cushioned part of that shoe, and then it just rockets you forward. And I get that same feeling at initial contact in this shoe. And I would say it's a little more controlled feeling than the Alpha Fly. Um, but I just like that really immediately responsive. Uh, initial contact, and then the forefoot rocker kind of pushes you into push-off. I've used it for a workout with threshold intervals. I've used it for a workout at like 10K pace intervals. And then on Sunday, yesterday, I used it for a 35-minute hilly tempo at like marathon effort. And I've got to say, I just, I love this shoe. I'm doing the New Haven 20K uh, Labor Day, and I think this is going to be my race shoe. I'm not sure I would use it in a marathon, although I think I'll know better after the 20K and maybe testing it on a couple more uh, marathon pace runs. 
I think it might be a little firm for a marathon, but you never know. So, um, I would, uh, this is an expensive shoe. It's $290, $40 more than the Vaporfly or the Alphafly, but I think it's worth it. Especially if you're someone like me who loved the original Alpha Fly, it's not available anymore, or it's only available in a couple sizes. Um, especially if you land at your midfoot or your forefoot, this feels like the original Alpha Fly. So check it out. Um, on Cloud Boom Echo Three is my number four shoe of the year, but will it be my number two or number one by the end of the year? We'll see. All right, my number three shoe is the Topo Cyclone 2, which I have put a ton of miles on this year. I think it's coming to the end of its life. I used it uh, last week on some dirt roads, so you can see I uh, kind of destroyed the, the exposed midsole there. But this shoe, I've used it literally for everything. Easy runs, I've used it for a long run of 17 miles. I've used it for workouts with intervals Hill sprints, mile pace intervals, 5K pace, 10K pace, uh, long marathon tempos. This shoe can do it all. It's light. For a women's size 7, it's 5.5 ounces, which is crazy. Um, the stack height is pretty reasonable. It's 27 in the heel, 22 in the forefoot, and it's got a P-Bax midsole, so it's a super foam. Topo did an amazing job with their first uh, super foam shoe. And I I just can't say enough good things about it. I, I've got, like I said, 250 miles on mine. I think it's time to get a new pair. The cushioning in the forefoot is feeling a little bit flat. Like I, I feel like it's bottoming out a little bit. Um, I'll probably still run a little bit more in it, but I'm going to order a new pair just to compare the new version to what my version feels now. Um, I think the reason I like this shoe so much, number one, Topo's toe box is the best in the business. It's wide without being sloppy. My foot doesn't move around in it, but also my MTPs have plenty of room. It's, they just strike a nice balance between a roomy toe box and not allowing any foot translation in the shoe. I also get along really well with the late toe spring Topo has, and the Cyclone 2 is no exception. Um, nice wide base gives me a really nice place to land right around here, and you just roll really nicely into push-off. But you can see the forefoot still has some flexibility to it, which I think is what helps make it comfortable at faster paces. I know David loves this shoe for track workouts. And while I don't do many workouts on the track when I do like mile pace work, this is the shoe that I go to first. It just feels the most natural. It provides enough cushioning without feeling unstable. Um, and it still provides plenty of ground feel because the stack height really isn't that much. Um, so this shoe... Can't wait to get a fresh pair, but Topo really hit it out of the park with this one. My number two shoe, which no one will be surprised about, although you might wonder why it's not my number one, is the Brooks Hyperion Max. This shoe has 100% been my do-it-all. Um, if I'm traveling, this is the shoe I'm bringing because I can use it for every run of the week. Um it fits really comfortably, although for me, I do use wear the men's version to get a little bit extra room in the toe box. So I would recommend that if you have a wider forefoot, women just go up to the men's size. Men, um, I do believe they make this shoe in the wide version, so I would check that out. But this shoe is amazing. First of all, it's light. It's seven and a half ounces for a men's size nine. 6.7 ounces for a women's size 8. That's really light for a training shoe. I've used it for 20 mile easy runs and my feet have felt cushioned, protected from the ground. It's just for me the right balance of stack height, cushioning, and responsiveness. I also find because of the slightly firmer ride and the rocker geometry, you can see there's a pretty good heel bevel 
pretty good four foot rocker, some toe spring here. It works really well for intervals, almost any pace. And kind of like the Topo Cyclone too, I've used it for every pace workout from mile pace to longer marathon tempos. And it just, it responds to the pace you ask of it. Um, so I've just loved having this shoe in my rotation because I know it can take anything I throw at it. Um, this is actually my second pair of the Hyperion Max this year. My first pair I got to about 300 miles and then felt like the midsole had just compressed too much, particularly where I land in the midfoot. So I ordered the second pair. I love this colorway, by the way. Um, the outsole on my first pair didn't really wear out much at all. There's pretty significant rubber coverage, and you can see. So this pair I've got, I think, like 170 miles on. It's just a little bit worn where the exposed midsole is, but the rubber, there's almost no wear on it. If it came down to just the rubber, this shoe would last, probably last 500 miles for me, but the DNA flash definitely felt like it had broken down pretty significantly by 300 miles. Um, the rubber gives it great traction in the rain. Like it's just, it's a dependable, comfortable, light, well-performing shoe. Um, if super shoes didn't exist, I'd run a marathon in this tomorrow. No question. So I, this is a $170 shoe. I think it's worth every penny. I really highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely been the replacement for the New Balance Beacon for me, which many of you know is my uh, primary love in running shoes, but does not exist anymore. So if you're a Beacon fan like me, check the Hyperion Max out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So now moving on to my number one shoe of the year, um, that is hands down the Vaporfly 3. This shoe I ran Grandma's Marathon in in June. Um, I had zero foot irritation or discomfort during the race, but even more importantly, after the race, my feet felt fine. My quads and hamstrings were tired, but my feet felt like you know, I hadn't done anything special the day before, so I'm really impressed with the updates they made to this shoe. I have the Vaporfly 1, I've got the Vaporfly 2, and obviously I've got this. This is my hands-down favorite version. Um, they, Some people may not know, they shifted the forefoot platform medially in version 3, and while Logically, I thought that perhaps I would not like that because I do tend to land pretty far laterally. It actually made the forefoot feel more stable and feel like it was more directly underneath my foot from initial contact to push off. So I, again, the proof is in the pudding of how I felt during and after the marathon. Um, definitely the most comfortable, best performing Vaporfly for me. Uh, they also updated the upper. This fly knit material is a lot more breathable than version one or two. There's a little bit more volume in the toe box. Um, I had to size up for version one and two, a half size. Not this one. This one's true to size. Had plenty of room for my big toe in length. Had no irritation at my MTPs in the width. Um, and again, I just can't say how much more breathable this version is. You can see how big the perforations are here. Uh, same asymmetrical lacing like previous versions. I never experienced any like irritation or hot spots from the laces in e any of the versions of this shoe, but just great fit, incredible performance. Um, I and Matt also found this. We both thought that this version felt a little bit firmer than versions one and two. And I know a lot of people disagreed with us. I thought maybe that would change as I put more miles on it. I've got a hundred miles now on it after the marathon. It still feels the same. So when I say it feels firmer than versions one or two, when you at initial contact in the first two versions, you get that sinking feeling before you kind of roll forward and push off. 
I just don't get that sinking in feeling with this shoe. It feels like you land and like you're immediately pushed forward. So one, it feels more responsive, but it also feels a little more stable because you don't get that sinking in feeling. And that may be specific to my mechanics as a midfoot striker. The shoe probably feels different to people who land further back. But for me as a lateral midfoot striker, the shoe feels more responsive than the previous versions, which is something that I like a lot. So uh, 5.6 ounces for a women's size 8, you can't beat that weight. They actually figured out how to make it lighter than um, versions 1 or 2, even with a little bit more um, rubber coverage on the sole. Um, you can see, so this is 100 miles. It's dirty, but there's really no areas of major wear. I think I'm going to get maybe another marathon out of these. I'm running Philly in November, so I've got to decide between these or maybe Cloud Boom Echo 3. We'll see. Um, but there's definitely some life left in these shoes, so I'll keep you guys updated about what I choose. So thank you for listening to my um, top five shoes so far of 2023. There are some really exciting shoes coming out in the second half that I'm really excited to try. can't talk about them yet, but hopefully soon. So I will keep you updated on what my thoughts are for the rest of the year, especially as I get further into marathon training. Um, like I said, we love hearing from you. Let us know what you think about shoes so far this year, what your favorites are. Shoot us an email, doctorsofrunning at gmail.com, or leave us a comment. Um, and thanks for listening.